Today we're taking a look at the Cloverbook Pro, a new portable video magnifier, and it might just be the best one we've ever had on the channel. Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome to The Blind Life, where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. If this is your first time to the channel, I make videos about living life with vision impairment and an emphasis on the assistive technology that can help make it awesome. So please consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications. All right, this is the new Cloverbook Pro brought to us by Sightcare. Uh, this particular unit was sent to me by my friends at Irie AT, so a huge thank you to them for doing that so that I can make this video for you guys. Now, I know I like to save it to the end of the video, my opinions, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it right now. I really, really like this device. In fact, I think it's becoming my favorite portable video magnifier I've ever tested on the channel. All right, I'll give you more of my opinion at the end of the video. But let's talk a little bit about the hardware for the Cloverbook Pro. So this is a pro version. This is the full, has the full bells and whistles, top of the line, <laughs> everything you could want is in the pro version. But there's actually two other versions you can choose from. We'll talk more about the differences between all three later on as well. The first thing you'll notice is that the Cloverbook takes the same design language that we've seen, design style that we've seen with other portable magnifiers, but the Cloverbook is doing some things better. Actually doing a lot of things better. Uh, <laughs> but as far as hardware, they have the integrated distance camera built into the device here. It's not an extra attachment that you have to pull out of the bag and plug in. It's already on here, ready to go anytime you need it. That's fantastic, that's awesome, I love that. The device is very sturdy. The joints are very strong. There's some resistance there, but not too much to make it difficult to move around but enough that like this screen here isn't slowly going to slide down as you're using it. It's going to stay in place and hold its position without any problems. The unit itself is really light. I think they say it's right around five pounds, which isn't bad at all. I mean, you can move this around without any problems. The screen, you've got a large 12.5 inch full HD touch screen. We'll talk about the touch screen capabilities here in a minute, but the screen also has a matte coating, which is really cool. That's going to cut down significantly on the glares from lights in your environment. Something else that's really cool, which I I really appreciate are physical buttons and knobs and dials. You know, I'm old school. I've been using CCTVs for like 30 years now and I've always loved dials. So it's really cool to see them on here as well. It's just a, a pleasing tactile experience. You have some more buttons on the sides of the Clover book. We'll talk about that as we get into the operations. One thing I did want to point out though is the power button. Power button is on the side here, and right below the power button is the power port for plugging in the cable, the power cable. That's one of those things that just makes sense. Whenever I get a new device, the first thing I have to do is go hunting for the power port. So having this large high contrast power button and the power port right below it is fantastic. Another thing about the power cable is the end of it is a round plug. So no flat power plugs that you've got to figure out which way it goes in. It's round, so it doesn't matter which way. It's gonna go right in with no problems. Also talking about power, the Clover Book also has an internal battery. Here it is right here, a nice high contrast white button against the black of the device itself. That white button is how you eject the battery. So this is great because oftentimes when a device starts to wear down, it's the battery, the battery starts to wear down. So having a replaceable battery just makes sense. If the battery starts to lose its charge, I can just order a new battery and I don't have to buy a whole new device. The Clover Book will run on battery power for about four hours, I believe it is, but you can also just plug the cable directly into it and run off AC power. All right, so that is the device in a nutshell, the hardware. Let's take a look at what comes in the box and then we'll go through the basic operations. 
You get the Cloverbook Pro inside of a really nice carrying case. The case has a strap on it and the Cloverbook is perfectly fitted within the case. I see a lot of devices, I see a lot of digital magnifiers and oftentimes they will come with a case. But most of the time, it's just a generic case that wasn't even made for the device. It's, it's like they just added it in just to, just to add something to the purchase, which is fine. But the problem is oftentimes the device doesn't really fit in it. But it's not the case with the Cloverbook Pro. There's an insert in the bag that fits the device perfectly. So it's gonna be a very secure fit inside the bag. As far as cables, you get the charging plug and extender cable for the charging plug to give you a little bit more length and an HDMI cable, which you can use to connect the Cloverbook to a large external screen. It's really easy to set up and it's really adjustable to fit whatever reading position that's going to work the best for you. The distance camera is located on the side here and just swings up like that. Here on the side of the device, you have several ports. You have an SD card slot, and that's going to expand the internal memory of the device. And then you also have an HDMI port. So along with the provided HDMI cable, you'll be able to plug this up to a TV or another external monitor. All right, let's go ahead and power this on. We just want to long press the power button for a second or two. The button will light up. The light comes on and the device will power on. Get a little sound effect there. Got a magazine here that we can use. So we have a dial here that will zoom in and this will magnify really, really large. This has a 4K camera in it as well as the 1080p screen. And as I mentioned before, this is a touch screen. So we can zoom in with the dial here or we can do pinch to zoom and zoom out, pinch to zoom in. We can also move this around, this image around. Just one finger will move it around if I want to pan back and forth to read. Or I can use this joystick here to pan and pan back and forth and read. I can also go up and down. So obviously this is gonna be great for reading text. The up and down panning would be great for looking at a phone bill and you just wanna kinda of go up and down the columns. We have lots of color options. I can use the dial here to navigate through all the different color filters. All the ones we're pretty, pretty well familiar with. Any time that I want to go back to color, I just press the little button that's on top of the color dial here. Jumps me right back into color. Let's look at a color picture here. So here we go. If I wanna cycle through all the different color filters, but then I wanna go back, just tap that button, takes me right back to color. I can also customize these colors. Say I'm never gonna use this white on blue. It doesn't work for me. I don't need to have it in my color menu. I just long press my color button here. Customize color combination. And we're right into the color combinations and I can turn these off if I want to just by tapping on them, tapping on them to bring them back, tap the home button to go back and we're back to the live mode, live view. So you heard her talk to me there. We do have audible menus on this. If I long press the home button, jumps us into the menu system. I can use either the dial here to navigate through this menu or I can tap on whatever option I want. But if I navigate through, it announces the menu to me. That's really cool. If I wanna freeze frame this image, I tap the freeze frame button on the side here. And now, that image is frozen on the screen and I can manipulate it, I can zoom in, I can move it around. I can save that image to my internal memory and bring it back up later if I want to. Whenever I'm done, just tap the picture button again and we're back to live image. This also has the lines, the reading lines and the masks if I tap the mask button over here, the line button on the left side, line mask on. and we have several options we can choose from. Vertical line. We also have the shades. 
horizontal and vertical. Say I'm sitting in the classroom and I want to see the teacher. Let's go ahead and turn on the distance camera. I'm gonna tap the camera button, which is on the left side as well. And here it is, and it's actually pointing back towards that camera, but I can rotate here. Let's take a look at the Blind Life sign up there, logo. I can angle it back a little bit. If I needed to angle it a certain way, I could do that. Now that it's pointing over there, I can zoom in. Turn it a little bit so I can line up my shot here. I can also pinch to zoom. If I was reading the board or reading a PowerPoint and I needed my color filters, of course we can do that as well, even in the distance viewing. Let's zoom out a little bit. Say I wanted to trim up my beard a little bit, I could rotate it around here and it switches to selfie and there I am. Hi. <laughs> and if I wanted to, like I said, trim up my beard a little bit, I could zoom in and get a real close look at it. Put on my makeup. <laughs> Okay, here is probably the coolest feature, one of the two coolest features of the Cloverbook Pro. If I press the camera button again, Horizontal split screen. we jump into a split screen mode. So the image at the top of the screen is my distance camera, and the image at the bottom is the magazine down here underneath the device. So if you can imagine, once again, I'm in the classroom and I'm watching the teacher at the front of the room on here, but I'm also down here and I'm taking notes as to what she's talking about. This is awesome, I love this. Now there's a little red box around the upper half of the screen around the distance camera image. And that means that I can interact with that image or that section of the screen. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can change the colors, I can do everything I want to. If I want to interact with the bottom section here, I just tap it. Now that red box is around the bottom section of the screen and now I can interact with that section. I can change my colors, I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can do all of that. If I tap the camera button again, now we are in vertical split screen. So the distance camera image is on the right side of the screen. The magazine down below is on the left side. Tapping it again, mm -hmm. takes it back down to the magnifier down below. Now this also has OCR text to speech. So if I, let me zoom out just a little bit here and we're gonna try and OCR this section of text. So I'm going to tap the OCR button here on the right. Page text it took the picture and now there's some on-screen buttons here. I can tap the home button to bring those buttons back if they, if they go away. We can use these on-screen buttons, but of course we can also use the physical buttons here. So if I press the text-to-speech button again. Characteristics to recognize. The value of a color is determined by its degree of lightness or darkness. It starts to read the text for me. And you'll notice that this is a freeze frame image of the text. So there's two ways to view this text. We can view it as this freeze frame image. If I bring up those controls again and I touch this P, text mode. it changed it to text mode. And so now it's basically converted that image into just a paragraph of text on the screen. And we've got a little highlight that will follow along as it reads. Color theory examines only pure color, known as hue, along with hues and their positions on the color wheel. There are other characteristics. Now we can interact with this as well. If I zoom here, it's gonna make it larger on the screen, larger, smaller. I can change the colors once again. A lot of the same functionality that we have everywhere else applies here as well. If I would like to scan an entire page, just lift this up here like this, stand it up, set the page in landscape orientation. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. I'm gonna long press the text-to-speech button here. 
And now we have a full sheet size box here. And I just want to try and line up the page. And I think that's pretty good. Now I can either tap the text to speech button again. I have an on screen button here. I'm just going to tap the button, the physical button. And it's going to snap a picture of this. And just like before, we have the image on there of the sheet. I can touch this, go to the text mode. So now the text is displayed. I can tap this to start reading. Beyond color, color theory examines only pure color, known as hue, along with hues and their positions on the color wheel. So I think I've saved probably the best for last and that is this additional 12 inch screen that you can get for your clover book it fits perfectly into the back of the clover book here plugs in via hdmi and what it essentially does is creates a dual screen setup so if we bring our magazine back in here you can see that now we have magnification on both screens and of course we can do everything as before change the colors all of that now you might be asking well what's the purpose or what's the benefit of having both screens magnifying the same item or the same image and i'll get to that here we'll come back to that here in a second but one benefit of having the two screens is when you turn on the distance camera so if i press the camera here distance. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but really good quality on that camera, especially if you have good lighting, like in a classroom, it's a very impressive image coming off of that little camera. But once again, we have the same image on both screens. However, if I tap the camera button again, now we have a much larger split screen situation. Say I want to reverse the images here, just tap the camera button again. And now we have the distance viewing down at the bottom, the text at the top. Pressing it again, once again, brings me back to the new view or the live video magnification. Earlier I brought up the question of what would be the purpose of having the same magnified image on both screens. Well, check this out. If I long press the zoom magnifying button here, click and hold, this image zooms out and there's a large rectangle there that indicates where the magnification is. If I zoom in, it zooms in up there obviously, but here my little box gets smaller What's really cool though is, say I want to read this up here at the top. I just put my finger on the box and I can move it up there to the top and that moves as well. So maybe I just want to read back and forth. I just want to use my finger to move it along. I'm looking up here, but I'm moving it on this screen down here. How cool is that? Say we've got a picture here. I'll say, oh, what's that logo? Okay. What is this text down here? Let's move it down here and read this text. I can also use the joystick, obviously, but my finger just works so much better to move it around the screen. Really, really cool feature. I could see that being super helpful for a lot of people, especially students. All right, guys, so that was most of the operations for the Clover book. Uh, I mainly just wanted to hit the highlights. I didn't even go through all the things that it can do. Now, as far as my opinion, I mentioned it at the beginning. I think this is now become my favorite portable video magnifier. It just seems to do everything right. Uh, it's not perfect. I don't think any device is perfect. Uh, if I did have to nitpick something, uh, the OCR could be faster, I guess you could say. When you press the OCR button, it takes a photo, scans it. Uh, that whole process could be a little quicker. I know they are constantly updating the software, so that's probably something they will improve in the future. So I'm not too worried about that. All in all, the OCR wasn't really bad for one of these types of machines. Uh, in fact, it worked pretty well as far as scanning and accurately reading out the text. 
But other than that, man, I mean, it's a beautiful screen, 4K camera, full HD screen, touch screen. I love the matte finish. I already talked about the hardware and the form factor. It's just solid. The buttons are great. You've got all the ports you could possibly need, um, HDMI that you can output to a, another screen, fantastic. The camera, the distance and selfie camera is really nice quality. I mean, I was impressed with the quality for such a little camera. As I mentioned at the beginning, the fact that it's built in to the device, it's not something extra you have to pull out and plug in. The replaceable battery is great. That's a nice feature as well. The best feature of all though, the split screen with the distance camera and the magnifier, and then being able to attach that extra monitor to get the dual monitor set up. That was awesome. I, I mentioned it before, but I think that's gonna be fantastic for classrooms. Let's talk about the different models. You've got the Cloverbook Lite, the Cloverbook Plus, and this, the Cloverbook Pro. What comes with what? So the Cloverbook Lite is basically what you have here as far as the device itself, the 12.5 inch touchscreen, the controls, it does magnification and it does the colors, and you also get the carrying bag. The Cloverbook Lite is right around $1,800. The Cloverbook Plus is all of that plus the distance camera which of course means you'll be able to do the side-by-side -side split screen. That's the Cloverbook Plus, and that is $2,200. Then finally, you have this guy here, the Cloverbook Pro. It's got everything. It's got the magnification, the colors, the distance camera, and the text-to-speech OCR. This, with the case and everything, is right around $2,600. Then if you want to add in the second monitor so you can get the dual monitor setup, that brings it up to, I think, 29.4 or something like that. So if you would like more information about the Cloverbook Pro or any of the other Cloverbook options, I will have links in the description down below. You can also reach out to your local Irie AT distributor. And on that note, a huge thank you once again to Irie AT for sending out this unit so that I could make this video. If you guys liked the video and found it helpful, be sure to hit the like button, share it on social media. If you'd like more information about this or other assistive technology, be sure to check out theblindlife.net. You can also join me on all the other social media platforms, as well as the brand new The Blind Life life discord all of those links are in the description down below but that is it for this one guys thank you once again sam with the blind life i'll see you next time